Alright, back again, Luke here, and today what I want to do is give a little bit more information here on these Xbox 360 repairs. I know there's a couple of guys out there that are still suffering from some trouble here trying to get them to work. Uh, Jason Relaxation sent me a PM and was wondering how to get his 360 back up and running, and I figured I'd make this video here to kind of add a little bit more info on it. Uh, what you want to do, basically, is uh, if you want to get this done easily and not have to worry about uh, the yen fix or the penny fix trick, which also does work, it's just a little bit more of a hassle with trying to fine-tune the screws on the outside here, and those being Torx bit, they're not the funnest to work with. Uh, you can just wind up removing all of those Torx bits, and instead you want to replace them with some of these. Uh, these are uh, 5x10. These are regular Phillips head screws, and these can be found at your local hardware store. These are uh, fine thread, and uh, 5 by 10 is the perfect size here for these pegs. And these pegs are the original ones that are in there uh, that the X-clamp hooks onto, and these are actually attached to the heat sink on the GPU and CPU. What you want to do is you want to remove these from the GPU and CPU pretty easily, uh, uh, easily removable. Um, all you have to do is just use a pair of pliers or vice grips and you can just turn them right out. But what you're going to do is take those out there and when you get those out, you're going to remove the board, uh, remove all of the, the components on the board here and take the board out. If you notice on the bottom here, there's no more screws left and the reason why is because those screws are actually attached to the board itself, not uh, attached to the chassis here. And what you'll do is you'll push these screws here through the bottom of the circuit board. And once you get these screws pushed through, you're also going to want to pick up uh, some of these. These are some really small washers. You want to try and get the smallest ones you can, but that uh, they'll still fit around the screw here. And you only need two of them. Now, two of these is going to be the perfect thickness here. Uh, basically the same thickness as this uh, nut on the end here. And that's going to be your spacer. So once you get those pushed through the board here, it's going to be really hard since I already got it put back together, but you're going to push it through the board, and once you have this pushed through your circuit board, you're on the other end, you're going to put on two of your spacers here. Ooh, as I drop one, you're going to put on two of these spacers here, and... What I recommend is when you put this thing back together, you know, keep it on end here, because it makes it a lot easier. Um, keep the circuit board on end and then push these through have all four of them lined up and then just do one heat sink at a time But slowly, you know by hand just uh, tighten those in there a little bit and here's the trick uh, Because this GPU and CPU heat sink has to have a certain amount of pressure applied to it for it to work properly uh, You have to kind of tighten it down much like you would a tire on a car now you can't just go around and go one, two, three, four. It just doesn't uh, balance it out. So you want to go in an X pattern and slightly tighten down this one, this one, this one, this one. And keep doing that until you get it kind of snug. And once you get it pretty snug, you know, work on the next one and get the other one done. And then put your, uh, your board back in here, hook up your fan, hook up your uh, DVD drive, and plug it in and see if you get, uh, get it to work right. And the best way that this thing will work is, um, or the, the, the way you can tell that it's working best is when you plug it in, you turn it on, the fans are going at uh, a, a pretty low speed. Now if you got the fans kicking on at high gear or they start slow and then they wind up and start uh, screaming, that means you got them down a little bit too tight or you don't have them down tight enough and uh, it's getting too hot. And usually what will happen as a result of that is the, uh, the green light will soon turn red and you'll get two flashing red lights which means it's overheating. That's just the protection mechanism inside the box. But um, it might take a little bit of tweaking to get it to work right. And especially with the GPU, now if you don't get that one right, what you're going to have is uh, you're going to have a good screen and then it's going to start glitching out. Or it might look nice at the beginning and then soon, suddenly start to look as if uh, somebody's putting a magnifying glass or a degaussing device over it. It'll just start to, to fade out. So it's not a big deal. All you have to do is you know go back and make your adjustments on the, the board, put it back in. And uh, with a little bit of luck and you know just a little bit of tweaking, You'll get, uh, you'll get your 360 up and running, you won't have any trouble. Now, I've repaired a, a million of these things, and I've used both ways. I've used the yen fix trick or penny fix trick, and then I've also used uh, the uh, swap out for these screws. And once again, you know, if you don't want to go and spend a lot of time trying to play around with those Torx head bits, and, uh, you know, it'll drive you nuts, if you have a hardware store down the street, go and pick up some of these 5x10, 5 x uh, 5x10 uh, 
fine thread screws, and then you want to pick up some washers here. I picked up about, uh, I don't know, a hundred or two hundred of them a long time ago, so I still have a lot of them left over. But uh, you're going to want to pick these up. As for these pads here, you don't even need them. Um, you can just take them off. I mean, if you want to leave them on there, that's great, but uh, really, you don't need them anymore, so you can take them off. It'll make the board fit in there a lot smoother. And when you get everything done and put back together, you'll have your 360 running smoothly. Uh, it won't sound like the fans are kicking in too high speed. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you'll be back up to running again in no time flat. Well, one other thing to make sure is that when you do replace uh, the screws on these heat sinks here for the GPU and CPU, make sure that you apply some thermal compound. Uh, try your best to get as much of it as you can off of the GPU and CPU, you know, without using any sort of uh, super abrasive cleaners. Uh, you can kind of probably just use some regular rubbing alcohol and uh, a Q-tip and get them clean. And then uh, apply enough of the thermal compound. A lot of people like to use uh, Arctic Silver but uh, any thermal compound will work, so just apply a little bit of that, put it back together, and uh, you'll have your 360 up and running, yeah, like this. I mean, great, no problems at all, and uh, you shouldn't have to worry about it for quite some time. Once again, the key point here is to make sure when you tighten these down, tighten them down in a crosshatch pattern, and if you're still getting any sort of error whatsoever, um, whether it be the red lights flashing or glitching on the GPU, or if you're getting sound but no video, all of those are related to the tightness on the screws, and if they're not tight enough, you'll get one of those errors. So play around with that, give that a shot here, and I'm sure within, you know, I don't know, a good hour or so, you'll be back up to gaming again, and you'll have that self-satisfaction of knowing that uh, you repaired your own machine and didn't have to send it off and didn't have to spend a lot of money on it. Basically, these screws here, uh, they cost, I don't know, maybe five cents a screw. Some some screws would probably cost you two cents. I don't know. They, they're really cheap, you know. For about ten bucks, including the thermal compound, you can get your Xbox running in no time flat. Save you a heap load of money. So, just wanted to share this uh, little bit of a tip video here with you once again. And that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon. So, thanks for watching.